Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture of the course Digital Electronics and Circuits. And in this particular lecture, we will start talking about sequential circuits. And in this particular lecture, we will uh, focus on the concept of memories and latches. To begin with, right, uh, what we have seen till now are combinational circuits, and our combinational circuits look something like this. We have a combinational circuit sitting over here. we have a set of inputs we have set of outputs and uh, my output at any particular state is proportional to or it's dependent on or it's function of only input it does not depend upon anything else and the same set of inputs will yield the same output correct now sequential circuits as we spoke in one of our beginning lectures sequential circuits are different from combinational circuits because their output is not only a function of input but also function of present or current state of the system right which means they have a set of memory and timing element related to them in that case right if you have to draw a sequential circuit a sequential circuit would look something like this we have an input we have set of outputs and uh, this is nothing but a combinational circuit over here and then we have a concept of memory sort of a loop back in the circuit so this is a concept of memory so what happens in this case right in contrast to a combinational circuit the output of a sequential circuit will depend not only on the inputs but also the state which is the current contents of this memory which is what we saw over here right this makes things more difficult to understand because the same set of inputs can yield different output depending upon what is the present state of the system or the contents of the memory. Additionally, this output would change depending upon the present state and the contents of memory would also change as, as and when the circuit proceeds, right? So basically, we will be talking about this memory elements and some example of few latches as a sequential devices. Uh, but uh, if we have to see some real life examples of sequential devices, right? I would say one of the example is uh, combinational locks. Let's assume we have a lock and the lock is a combination lock. It will have a password. Let's assume the password of a lock is like 9876. The lock will only open if this password is supplied in this particular order, right? So the ordering becomes very important. The second example would be elevators. So when we have elevators, right? Uh, elevators move up and down and open or close in response to the buttons that are pressed on different floors and in the elevator itself. And depending upon the floor, it will uh, uh, make a guess. Uh, it, it will make a judgment at that point of time only whether it has to move up or down. Correct. So that elevators also have a sort of a memory uh, uh, related to them. So most importantly for us, right? Computers are also sequential. Our computer systems, right? For example, right, the key presses and the mouse clicks have different effects based upon which program is loaded into the memory and which is the state of the program. Correct. So this is this is the basics about sequential circuits. We, sequential circuits are nothing but a combination of combinational circuits and they have a set of memory because of which the output depends not only on the present input, but also on the present state of the system. Correct. And if we look at it, what would this mean is basically uh, depending upon the memory components or what is the content of the memory same set of inputs can generate different set of outputs we saw a few examples of sequential circuits one being combinational logs one another being uh, elevators and third being our computer systems so now if we talk about what exactly is a memory we looked at okay sequential circuits needs to have a memory but what exactly is a memory for for a system to be called as a memory or for a circuit to be called as memory it should support at least three operations it should be able to hold a value only then it will be called as a memory we should be able to read a value that is saved and number three we should be able to change this value Correct. So a memory has three functions. It should be able to hold a value. It should be able to read a value that is saved and we should be able to change the saved value. Correct. So let's start with the simplest example of a memory, right? Let's assume that we want to 
look at a case where we have a one bit memory. So basically when we say one bit memory, it should be able to hold either zero or one. Correct. We should be able to read this value. Right. We should be able to change this value. Which is like change zero to one and one to zero. Correct. And when we say change zero to one, we means like set the value. And when you say change from 1 to 0, we should be able to say like reset the value. Correct. And tell me one thing like how can a circuit remember anything when it's just a bunch of gates that can produce outputs according to the inputs. Right. As we spoke, the idea for a memory is to create some sort of a loop in the circuit so that outputs are also the inputs and we get a we, we get a uh, idea of uh, storage in the memory. Correct. So let's look at uh, this particular example. Let's assume that we have two NOT gates. Connected back to back. Such that output of this feeds into input of this. Right. So let's assume the state is Q. Let's assume the state is Q bar. Correct. This is one of the examples or we can simply say this is nothing but something like this this is output one this is output another so basically both are not of each other because output of this goes back as an input it gets negated this negated value goes here gets negated right so basically for this particular circuit can we say this is a memory does it satisfy properties of the memory we spoke about just okay let's assume that q was zero at one point of time q bar would be equal to one does it is it able to hold a value either zero or one yes if depend if q bar is one q is zero this will always have this if we tap it from here it should be always equal to zero if we tap from here it will be always equal to one so basically yes it's able to hold a value correct we will be able to read this value as well correct we can uh, read this particular q value we can read this q bar value we can read any one of them and can we change this value no, we can't change this value in this particular circuit because there are no external inputs over here and we can't control. Hence, we can't control what is the value of Q and Q bar. Correct. So this particular thing does not satisfy what our memory is. Reason being, even though it satisfies the first property that is able to hold a value, we can read this value. We are not able to change this value because there are no external inputs over here. So what we need to do is uh, basically we need to have a set of external input to be able to save a well uh, for, for it to be called as a memory because we should be able to change that value. Now we have this NOT gates, right? Let's try to replace this NOT gates using a NOR gate. Correct. So now let's assume we put two NOR gates, not a for. We put a NOR gate here also. Correct. We have two inputs. Both of them are input. Let's call this input as R input. Reset input. This is set input. And then to create a memory, what we had was we had this feedback loop. Correct. Here we say this is Q output. This is Q bar output. So basically uh, what we are doing over here is output of this NOR gate feedback to this particular NOR gate and output of this NOR gate feedback to this particular NOR gate. Now let's see uh, what is the value of this circuit or uh, whether we are will be able to call this a memory or not right. So to be able to figure out how this Q and Q bar change right what we have to do is let's kind uh, let's try writing an equation. So basically Q at any next cycle would be equal to what R NOR with current Q bar. Right. Similarly, Q bar next would be equal to what S plus Q current whole bar. Right. Now let's uh, let's see whether we are able to get a functionality of a memory or not. Correct. Let's assume a case where I 
our inputs s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 0 now what happened in this case right my q next would be equal to what this will be r is 0 so it will be bar of q current bar so it will be equal to q current and my q bar next would be equal to what it would be equal to q bar current in this case when my s and r are zero what we are able to say that my next state would depend upon the current state correct it means that we are able to store a value or basically hold a value so first property of a memory is satisfied correct now let's look at a second case where we assume that okay let's make s is equal to 1 r is equal to 0 what happens q next should be equal to r is 0 right uh, since r is 0 and my s is 1 and since s is 1 right what we would be able to say since s is 1 my q bar next s is 1 q bar next would all 1 odd with anything is always 1 not of 1 is 0 q bar next is 0 and if q bar uh, next is 0 correct this 0 would feed in over here my r is 0 0 plus 0 bar is 1 is this clear right when s becomes 1 r is 0 when we make s as 1 output of this particular nor gate would always be 0 because anything odd with 1 is 1 and not of that would be 0 once this 0 feeds in over here r is also 0 0 0 odd is 0 and not of that would always be 1 so my system would settle at this particular stage correct uh, where a stage we say that okay q uh, next is 1 and q bar next is 0 correct even though right see the thing is right over here once we try to understand this let's look at it into a bit uh, depth as well what would happen over here in my first gate uh, so basically as soon as we will uh, set s is equal to 1 with the first gate delay right let's assume first gate delay what would happen with one gate delay my q bar will become equal to 0 this q bar will propagate over here and after second gate delay this r and r q will become equal to 1 so basically this particular value of r being equal to uh, q, q being equal to 1 and q bar equal to 0 this system will stabilize to this particular value after two gate delays is this particular thing clear so basically uh, what i meant over here is let's assume that we had a system like this this is a bar okay and these are different time delays this is 0 time 1 time 2 time units three time unit four time units correct let's assume at some point of time s was made equal to one this is s and r was made equal to zero at the same point of time correct now what would happen is uh, how would a q and q bar behave in this particular case q bar would be something like okay as soon as s becomes 1 s becomes 1 q bar will become equal to 0 sorry q bar as as soon as s is equal to 1 right what would happen is uh, sorry about this uh, we will wait for it to get restored back and in the meanwhile what we will do is we will look at this particular case right where we say that when s is equal to 1 my r was equal to 0 and basically what happens as soon as s becomes 1 q bar will become equal to 0 with one gate delay correct so uh, let's look at this particular case yeah we are back so once s is equal to 1 r is equal to 0 now what we would say is my q bar will become equal to 0 after one clock cycle so basically after one gate delay q bar would be 0 if q was a value 1 before right after one gate delay it will become a value 0 now what would happen if q bar was 1 before let's assume q was 0 in the initial state of q was 0 what would happen it will remain 0 for the first cycle 
it will remain and at the end of second cycle at the end of second gate delay right when this particular zero propagate here q would become one at this point of time and post this the circuit will remain in a stable state correct so basically in this particular case what we are able to do is depending upon the uh, we were able to store and hold a value if we are able to say okay make of both these inputs is equal to zero when we made one input as one we are able to say my next state would become one our next state would change so we are able to change the stored value same is the case when we make s is equal to zero and r is equal to one when r is equal to one what would what would this do my q next will become equal to zero and q bar next will become equal to one in this particular case q next would be uh, reflected after one clock delay one one gate delay and q bar next would be reflected after two gate delay correct but we will be able to change the stored value we will be able to change the stored value to one and to zero so basically one of the properties of the memory which was not satisfied in the previous example we are able to satisfy in this particular case right we were when s is equal to one we were able to set the latch to a value one we were able to set this value output as one when reset was one we were able to set this value to zero we were able to reset the circuit right and once we were able to do right the system attains a stable state as we saw over here through this diagram now what happens in a particular case when what happens in this particular case uh, when both s and r becomes one correct let's uh, look at a case when both s and r becomes one when both s and r becomes one what would happen uh, q bar uh, next q next would be equal to one if we look at this particular formula if uh, both becomes one what would happen is this is this will become one this will become one again right both will become one my q next and q bar next would become one and if both of them become one what's the problem would be this particular one would feed in over here this particular one would feed in over here these inputs we already set to one so one plus one is one or with one is one but the output is zero so basically what would happen is after a one gate delay right one gate delay q next will become zero q bar next will again become zero now what would happen when both of them are zero after this becomes zero let's assume in the next case both are zero these will feed back r is one s is one both are zero what would be the output of this particular gate it will again become one one odd with zero is one like right? it will again it will be a evil state so basically what is happening in this particular case right we will be able to see a situation where the circuit is oscillating between a value of one zero one zero one so basically we call this state as a evil state and we say that this state should be avoided so both s and r should never be set to one simultaneously correct and uh, i hope this example is clear we spoke about a memory component we started with one bit not uh, gate we said okay this is able to specify or it's able to uh, like meet two requirements of a memory which is holding a value and a reading a value but we are not able to change this value so we went ahead and we said for changing a value we need to have a set of inputs right so we replace this not gate with a nor gate with r and s and we saw cases of where we were able to store a value with both being zero with set being one and reset being one we were able to see a state where we were able to change the value and store the value to a stable state being either setting the circuit or resetting the circuit and we saw another combination where we said if we set both to one right that will be a, a lethal state because eventually it will uh, lead us to a state where uh, what happens is where we are able to where we will see like continuously there will be like oscillation in the circuits from one zero one zero correct and that was because once uh, we make both is equal to one right once both r and s are made equal to one both the output would toggle to one because of this equations r is made one so q next and q bar next will both will become one and once this once this one values feed into a circuit and if we change at this particular and what would happen once this happens right once this happen one and one output will become equal to zero 
this zero would feedback and once this zero feedbacks what happens is again we will uh, keep on seeing the same output the 1010 evil output correct now let's look at few of the terms like uh, we in the combinational circuit we saw something like truth table in sequential circuit what we will do is this is for a combinational right for a combinational logic we saw this concept for sequential circuit we will talk about something called as a characteristic table right we will uh, so basically the truth table i am sorry over here truth table will corresponds to something called as a state table and what we will do is we will look at a characteristic table also we will see what a characteristic table is right so basically for a combinational circuit right we used to have something like if we have three inputs x y z and we have an output say alpha we used to say okay depending upon what are the input states my output states would vary for example we saw a very common um, and a possible like combination of a, a adder right where we had sum and carry out and we drew a truth table for that where we said okay sum is like summation of min terms of 1 2 4 and 7 similarly we saw that for uh, carry out as well however in sequential circuit we don't have a truth table we have something called as a state table and state table is, is something like okay let's assume that we have to draw a state table for this rs circuit whichever we draw right so we will have set of inputs which are nothing but set and reset and one important difference in state table as compared to truth table is we will have set of current state where we say q and q bar and then we have a set of outputs where we have next state now what we saw in this particular case right if if uh, we have both set and reset is equal to zero we our next state would be equal to current state so my current states could be what either it can be one zero it could be this one right what would happen in that case if both are zero my next state is equal to current state so it will remain zero one zero one and one zero then we saw, saw a case where we said like okay let's put set is equal to one or let's do like in a case like we go in a binary order like let's assume we have a case where we set reset is equal to one if, if we said reset is equal to one we never uh, depended upon what is the current input we always said next state would be always q will be equal to zero q bar will be equal to 1 q will be equal to 0 q bar will be equal to 1 when we had a set of uh, state of set right what we said is whenever we have 1 0 we uh, again don't care about what is the current state always q will be 1 q bar will be 0 q is equal to 1 q bar is equal to 0 right so this particular table where we draw a mapping between inputs current state and next state is called as a state table right right and through this state table we can observe one simple thing we can observe even if we give same set of inputs both my outputs are different depending upon what is the content of a memory this is what we defined sequential circuits in the beginning so particularly this rs latch is a sequential circuit where my present set of outputs correct they depend not only on the input but also on the current state and even if we gave same set of inputs we can get different outputs depending upon the contents of a particular memory so this is all about state table and what is a characteristic table characteristic tables is something where we will define next state as a function of the inputs we say that when s is 0 r is 0 my output q has no change when s is 1 r is 0 s is 0 r is 1 when s is 1 basically output q is 1 which is set output q is 0 which is reset fine i hope this particular case is clearer and uh, this was all about sr latch correct we began with a comparison of combinational and sequential circuits we spoke about a memory properties of memory a not not gates not specifying one of the properties then we created and could replace not gates with nor gates with two inputs r and s which we called set and reset and we were able to see different combinations and we also saw one evil state where we saw that we should not make both the combinations as one right now let's see a variation of this rs latch let's see a variation where we will define a s bar r bar latch 
which will be based upon NAND gates and not NOR gates. So basically, if we replace the NOR gates we had with NAND gates, what would happen? Simple thing. If we replace NOR with NAND. Correct. So this is Q. This is Q bar. Correct. Let's term this as S bar. Let's term this as R bar. Now what would happen in this particular case, right? If we have to draw a characteristic table S bar, R bar and Q. What happens when both are 1? When S bar and R1 both are 1. Correct. What would happen in this particular case? When both are 1 and my state is a particular state is captured over here, right? We would achieve a state in Q when both are 1 where my both uh, we would say there is a no change in the state of a system. And that is because if you define Q next is what? S bar dot Q bar current whole bar s plus q current so basically when uh, basically what would happen is in this particular case this is like we applied a de morgan's law not of and we did and q next was equal to s plus q current and what we did in particular case over here is my q bar next would be equal to what this will be equal to r bar dot q current not of and this is equal to r plus q bar current correct if my both s bar and r bar are 1 my s is 0 this is 0 what would happen is q next would be remain equal to q current is this clear right if s bar and r bar are 1 s will be 0 r will be 0 my q next is equal to q current so this state there is a no change now if i put a case where s bar is 1 and r bar is 0 if r bar is 0 r is 1 if r is 1 right this will become 1 so q bar next would become 1 and q next would become equal to 0 so basically this is a state where we will say that a q the next state is 0 and uh, this is a condition of reset similarly if we move to a case where we say that okay uh, what we do is we make s bar is equal to 0 r bar equal to 1 we would say that okay if s bar is equal to 0 and r bar is equal to 1 in that particular case what would happen is this particular equation uh, would become 1 q q next should become 1 and since this becomes 1 this will be 0 and when we do a 0 0 combination when we do a 0 0 combination over here both of them q next and q bar next would become 1 and then we will again see that particular uh, loop of s uh, basically uh, 1 0 1 0 1 0 so this particular s bar r bar latch is just like a sr latch but with inverted pins as we can see from this table so this is uh, this is one of the example of s bar and r bar latch correct so I hope this was clearer uh, basically I will be writing it down over here in the foil as well so this was example of s bar r bar latch so I hope you like this lecture uh, in the next previous lecture right in the next lecture what I would do is I will talk about one more set of latches which is called as a d latch and we will take it forward from there uh, this will be one of the last latches which we discuss i hope this content was useful for this particular lecture uh, where we spoke about different combinations of memories not gates rs latch and s bar r bar latch thank you and stay tuned